Welcome, as we complete our journey through the chakra system. Today, we will cover the crown chakra. The superpower you receive from working on this chakra is everlasting peace, or what some people call enlightenment. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking that in the modern hustle and bustle, this is unlikely. Enlightenment is reserved for yogis sitting on mountaintops meditating all day and for saints. That is simply not true. If you have reached this point, you are being called to be a modern day mystic. Maybe you didn't realize that when you started exploring the path of the seeker, because I certainly didn't. Perhaps you just wished to know the truth, or you had a powerful spiritual awakening experience. This level does not require perfection or sacrifice, only perspective. All of our work has brought us to the mountaintop. Here, we can look back on the rivers, valleys, plains, and beaches that we have explored within our inner landscape. We have a potent, clear-seeing perspective and appreciation for the whole. Having been there ourselves, we can relate to every person that we meet no matter where they are on their journey. Here, we step out into what Colette Baron reed calls the uncharted. We let go completely of that old landscape that has defined us and learn to live without it. To live in the now, 24-7, 365 days of the year. We are pure, crystal clear authenticity. Let's start working on this chakra. The color for the chakra is clear or white. White is the integration of all colors. If you hold up a clear crystal to light, it will cast a prism of colors. The stones I use when working on this chakra are Herkimer diamonds, clear quartz, and selenite rose. According to the Essential Guide to Crystals, Minerals, and Stones, Herkimer diamonds heightens your consciousness and awareness as if you are turning on a light in a dark room. Use this stone to improve your spiritual sight and clairvoyance. This stone also helps sharpen your focus and mental ability, and it awakens your desire to learn new things. Clear quartz carries within it the full spectrum of light. It transmits and transduces energy. Use this stone for any and all spiritual pursuits. This stone provides clarity. Selenite Rose The symbol of the rose connects you with your sacred heart of love, which is your true nature. This stone further aligns you with the truth that we carry, a seed of love within us. It is up to each of us to cultivate and nurture that seed into a blossoming flower. This stone is beneficial to clear your thoughts of anything not resonating at the rate of love. Selenite Rose also carries the energy of universal love. By reminding you of your true nature, which is love, this stone gives you the ability to expand the love that you are and to attract back to you all that is love and loving. This stone is also useful for balancing your chakras so that you can align all aspects of yourself. The scents for the crown chakra are frankincense and myrrh, both of which are known for their purifying qualities. This chakra governs the pineal gland. The pineal is tucked deep within the brain and it has the shape of a pine cone. This gland produces melatonin, which regulates sleep, known as the circadian rhythm, and the amount of the hormone changes with the seasonal cycles. Ever wonder why during a spiritual awakening there is a tendency to wake up during 3 a.m. or 4 a.m.? How about the ability to look at the clock at 11.11 for several days in a row? Well, that's this little bugger of a gland calling to you from its place perched upon the mountaintop. There isn't a specific age associated with this chakra. Connection to the divine. Here is where an established meditation practice really comes in handy. Meditation is not a super serious practice that you absolutely must practice every day. Practicing every day does help, especially in your sacred space, but you can work yourself up to the practice. I will attach the meditation video I made for beginners in the description box below. Transcendence. This state of being occurs as a result of meditation. You might be like me. Initially, I was searching for a way out of this matrix. I thought ascendance and transcendence was the key and the doorway out. Yet this is different. You simply tap into a state of peace and can reside in that period for longer and longer periods of time as your practice continues. It becomes a sacred space within your consciousness you can go to at will at any time during any situation. Continual state of bliss. Yep, you read that right. As you work with this chakra, that constant state of blissful peacefulness will become a constant. I'm personally in a state of constant bliss, although it can still be thrown off from time to time when I encounter something unexpected. But it's easy for me to tap into with a little rest and meditation. I experience this without drugs. I live a very simple lifestyle with maybe a glass of booze a year and a Tylenol when my pain level is 9 or more. Enlightenment. A commonly overlooked element of this concept is that you must lighten up. Laughter comes easily when you're in a state of peace within and with a world without. You'll find laughing will become a natural everyday part of your life and it is very hard to look upon anything with deadly seriousness. An appreciation for the temporal state. Everything in this 
reality is temporary. When you have that deep and eternal abiding sense of peace, your mind, like a butterfly, will lightly touch upon a subject and then move on. Neither the Buddha nor Jesus were known to have many possessions or to take things extremely seriously. They both had a sense of humor because they knew their essence was eternal and nothing in this world could lead to the permanent pain or disfigurement of their essence. Temporary pain is easier to deal with when you realize it's temporary. Connection to the Divine Previously, you have purified your spirit in the fires of material experience. Now you are ready to step into the Holy of Holies and meet your Maker. The state of oneness temporarily experienced before becomes constant. You may be surprised what you find here is nothing but a mirror and a deep sense of love. Through your dreams and continued exploration in your daily life, you will refine this connection even more. Nearly Instant Manifestation An important part of manifestation process that is hardly mentioned in our materialistic world is how if your goals, desires, and needs are in alignment with the service of the whole, they start to manifest more quickly. The divine is more than happy to make sure you get all the material tools you need. A car, a place to live, a computer, a degree, or the connections with people to bring the message of peace to everyone. Once you hit that sweet spot of alignment, events that you thought were roadblocks up ahead melt away like fog before the light of sunrise. Gratitude. As the way forward opens up for you and obstacles that might have frightened you before melt away, you can't help but feel immense gratitude. Even amidst of heartbreaking tragedy, there is a deep sense of gratitude because you know it is only temporary, and it is teaching you the depth of love that you can feel. There isn't a level Maslow's hierarchy needs that corresponds to this level. Very few have attained it, though I know of a few walking around who have, and they are not the stereotype reinforced by Hollywood. There are more now on this planet than there have ever been before. Here, unlike in deficiency needs or being needs of self-actualization, where peak experiences are brief, you are a walking peak experience. They become so commonplace you are in a near constant dialogue with the divine within, whether in dreams or synchronicity in the outer world. Your path becomes undeniable and blatantly apparent. In Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, this is the level of the ultimate boon. What can be a greater treasure than constant bliss and near instant in manifestation? In John Van Aken's book, Edgar Casey on the Revelation, we find the spirit addressing the Church of Philadelphia. As the spiritual self approached the sixth center, located deep within the brain, it referred to that part of itself that is wholly true, has the key of David, opens and no one can shut, shuts and no one can open, Revelation 3, 7. Which is to say that only the spiritual part of our being can allow the spiritual process to proceed. This is considered to be one of the most holy centers in the human body. It is the place of the holy mount of God, according to Casey. If we enliven in this center, we draw all of the lower centers up to the high place and unite them with the God's spirit. The spirit acknowledged the works of this center, that it was kept his word and not denied his name. This center knew the truth of its spiritual nature and purpose for life. This was the only center with which the spirit finds no fault. Therefore, the spirit promised to draw all the cells of the body before it and make them bow to its truth. It also promised to keep the center from the temptation that has and was coming to the rest of the body, to test the body's true desires whether they were spiritual or strictly material and self-centered. If we fully awaken this center, then the spiritual self promised to make us a pillar in the temple of my God, and that we will never go out from it again. Revelation 3.12 I will include a sound meditation from the Temple Sounds for the chakra. Again, get out your journal and note any images or strong feelings you had. While our journey through the chakras may be over, your spiritual path is not. There is still much to learn and express. Don't be surprised if you find yourself called to teach this information. Every day is a new experience, a new lesson, and perhaps a test. I haven't mentioned the tests before, but they will come. Each time you're thrown a loop at this spiritual stage, however, your recovery time becomes faster. By determining the right action to take, the test will dissolve. As Moslow noted, this is a continual process. Joseph Campbell tells us that we must continuously venture out onto the hero's journey. Every day is a hero's journey, and every new experience, whether it's a relationship, a job, or a hike is a hero's journey where we learn more about ourselves and through knowing ourselves all that is. I perform meditation to maintain the alignment of my chakras every night before bed. Don't worry if you notice the chakra is out of alignment or it seems you're facing a new version of your shadow. These are merely tests and learning experiences. Life would be boring without them. These tests are how we continue to refine our spiritual nature. <laughs> 